Hello everyone, uh, this is Calculus Fall 20, I'm sorry, Spring 2021. Uh, my name is Scott Grizzard from the University of South Florida um, and all those wonderful things that I was supposed to say at the beginning of every lecture that I stream. Um, lecture, it's quiz review. This is the quiz review for, oops, that's the wrong thing. Uh, this is the quiz for, review for quiz 2B. Are there any questions before we get started? Um, so just a reminder, this is the last quiz under Zen Dudism rules. Um, I don't turn into a total jerk um, starting week uh, three, but I'm just give you a heads up that uh, this is the last one that can be redone for full credit. After this, it's half credit. Um, uh, are there any questions about that policy or anything like that? Okay. Uh, all right. So let's go ahead and let's just start. Uh, we'll start talking about it. So let's see. Uh, tablet. Okay. That's embarrassing. All right. I spent all this time making sure everything was set up and working beforehand, and now the tablet's not appearing. That's annoying. Nope. Tablet crashed. There it goes. Okay. Um, that's annoying. Anyway. All right. So this is the left version of two cops. There's a right version. There's the two-sided version. You may state any version. I was fine with that. Uh, let F top and bot be functions. A some number in the X space. L some number in the Y space. This is preamble. Not that. Okay. If for all x left near a, top of x is greater than or equal to f of x is greater than bot of x, and if the limit from x to a left of top equals the limit from x to a left bot equals l, then the limit as x goes to a minus of f of x equals l. You could have done this um, in a couple of ways, right? You could have also done the top goes to, right? You could have had the arrows instead. Arrow notation is fine for that. Um, how do we, f and then of course, there's kind of the picture here of top here, bot here. I've got some function. I've got some area left near A so that top is on top, bot is on the bottom and F is trapped between them, okay? So how do we feel about this one, one to five? Let's see, I gotta get this thing going here. Share, polling, uh, multiple choice. Uh, question one, one, two, three, four, five. Start. Little statement. I find it easier to remember the picture than the theorem. So I kind of draw myself a picture. I've got this kind of left a near thing. I've got an L in the Y space. I've got an A in the X space. I've got a top. I've got a bot. I've got two functions here going over there. They're all heading to the right there. I got a cup on top, a cup on bottom. I got an F strapped in between or it's a little drunk F. Um, everyone's headed to the paddy wagon. Okay. So just drawing the picture will get you two points uh, for and it'll get you two point refund. Um, so just picture as a two point refund. Um, and even if you don't have the, so it's actually pictured two point refund. So even if you don't have, so if, if you wrote something here, but messed up something here, you get a two point refund for the picture. Um, you can't go over the six points. If you wrote the preamble, it's a one point refund. Um, you could have used the book version. I'm fine with that. Here's what the book has to say about it. Um, and there's actually a nice, there's another, so the, the, the book uses H, G, and F here. Um, I, okay. I can't never remember that, but that's fine. Um, it has the error notation. You could have used the error notation. That's fine. Um, it's got X going to A. That's nice. It's got all of these things being trapped to L. That's nice. Uh, it's got an animated picture if you click on the link. 
that'll take you to the thing. Here's a photograph of what the book says. It calls it the squeeze theorem. <sighs> That's boring, but you can actually see it's the same. It's got two conditions and the conclusion and it's got that if then structure. Okay. So you could have used either one. That's fine. I like the bulleted version. So you could have gotten a rave with just saying if for all X left near a top is of X is greater than or equal to bot and that and this. So I like the bullets with two ifs, right? Two if conditions and then one conclusion. Um, that for me makes it easy to remember because I remember the picture and then I remember there's two ifs and one conclusion. Um, you could have done other things similar. Um, so if you, if you didn't draw the picture, but you got this right, you're golden. You don't need the picture. The picture is just, you know, I did something wrong somewhere so I can get two points back if I did something wrong in the problem, right? Let's say if I forgot the for all X left near a, right? You would have lost two points for forgetting that, but then you would have picked them back up if you drew the picture. Um, so do you need, no, so you don't need so there's a right-handed version where everything is we're all x right near a um you lose the a left you lose the a left there you lose the a left there it just becomes a there's a right-handed version where you just use right i'm sorry the right-handed version you make those pluses um and you make that right near for the two-sided version you get rid of the left near you, you, it's just for all x near a that's true and then the limit is x goes to a with no left the limit is x goes to a and you could have done either of those versions and that's fine so as long as you're consistent if you're doing left if you're doing right if you're doing two-sided that's fine now the reason why i do left and right and the book does not first left and right is okay with infinity okay so a it should be noted that a can be infinity here all right and, and that's okay um, and then the, um, um, it should be also noted that, um, do, 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 do here. Let's see. What was the other thing I wanted to know? Oh, and then usually, and I'm going to talk about this tonight, how to use these things in proofs, right? Cause that's what you're going to be doing. You want to be able, it's usually easier to do the left-handed side in isolation and then do the right-handed side in isolation instead of trying to deal with them both at the same time. Because if you try to deal with them both at the same time, a lot of times you end up with piecewise functions, right? And who wants to bother, right? Or absolute values, who just wants to bother? If you deal with the left in isolation from the right, your proofs tend to be a lot cleaner, a little longer, but a lot cleaner and a lot easier to understand and a lot easier to come up with. Um, so I think it's easier to deal with the left side and then deal with the right side. There's less cleverness going on. It's more boom, ba doom, ba doom, ba doom, ba doom. Um, and again, I'm going to talk about that tonight. Okay. State the following, no need to prove or, or justify if the limits infinity. So what I wanted you to do is I wanted you to go graph these functions, right? And I wanted you to figure out what was going on. And then I wanted you to throw away your notes and remember what the graphs look like. Okay, is everyone on board with that kind of idea behind this thing? I wanted you to kind of look at it, remember what the graphs look like and be able to recall those graphs. This right here, so this graph of one over X, this should be, I want you to print this graph up. If you don't know this graph, okay? If this graph is not memorized yet, I want you to go print it up. I want you to take your printer, uh, printed thing. I want you to go up to your bedroom and I want you to stick it on your ceiling. It should be the last thing you see at night. I want you to stick it on your ceiling and you go, okay, that's what one over X looks like. Okay. This graph should be in your brain. All right. You got to want it in there. So one to five, how do we feel about that? The graph of one over X is really, oops, wrong thing. The graph of one over X is very important. Okay, you should have this in your brain. One to five, how do we feel about that idea? I should know it. I'm going to go print it out. I'm going to stick it up on my door. I'm going to go stick it across my toilet. So every time I go to sit on the throne, I see the fact that this is the graph of one over X. Okay, 
Maybe I'll go get a waterproof sheet of paper. You can get them for like a buck a piece now. I'll paste it in my shower. What I was normally, you know, normally I'd be singing a little Barry Manilow or a little Frank Sinatra in the shower. Those vagabond blues, you know, kind of thing. Instead, I'm going to see this function is one over X and it goes to zero as X goes to infinity. Right. I'm, I I'm want that. I want that idea in the shower on the opposed for the bathroom by the bedroom. You need to know one over X. All right. So as X goes to infinity, Y goes to zero. As X goes to in zero from the left, as I get closer and closer here, Y goes to negative infinity. As X goes to zero from the right, Y goes to positive infinity. X, as X goes to zero, as it goes to zero from the left, it goes to negative infinity. As it goes from the right, it goes to positive infinity. Therefore, the limit as one over limit as X goes to zero of one over X does not exist. Okay. So one to five, how do we feel about those involving? So the question two stuff involving one over X. Any questions about that? And then give me a one to five on that. Give me a one to five. So, um, I'll get to that one in a minute. All I'm asking right now is about one over X. Okay, sine. The sine graph looks like this, okay? So as I go off to infinity, I've got a subsequence here. If I pick all of these, the odd pi over twos, uh, let's see. Uh, five pi over two, three pi, right. So as I pick these, right, pi over two, 5 pi over 2, 9 pi over 2, da 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 da. I've got a sequence here. Sequence. Xn goes to infinity. Yn goes to positive 1. Okay. But I've also got a sequence down here, right? Sn goes to infinity, Yn goes to negative 1. So I don't have a limit as x goes to infinity. Right, it never settles. I could pick a sequence that goes to positive 1. I could pick a sequence that goes to negative 1. All right which means that I don't have convergent behavior. These things, you know, somewhere I could pick a sequence that lands me at zero. You know, it never settles. So this does not exist. All right, one to five, how do we feel about that ooh never settles? So sine never settles as I go to infinity. Okay. Sign never settles as X goes to infinity. Now that's not to say that these other limits, right? If I if I had the limit as X goes to zero, that's okay, right? The limit as X goes to zero of sine of X equals zero. That's fine. If I'm heading for zero, I can get somewhere. But if I go off to infinity, I never settle. Zero is okay, but nothing else is. I mean, everything else is except the infinities, right? This function is continuous. It has, I could directly substitute it. By the way, that's going to be sine and, and some of these limits are going to be kind of the, the, the thing we're going to check out next time. Uh, the problem set three. Okay. Tangent of theta equals positive infinity. Okay. 
So there are a couple ways to think about this. Here's the graph of tangent. All right. So here is the, the thing I'm interested in is this thing here. And as I come from the left, I shoot off to positive infinity. Okay, so that's one way to think about it. Another way to think about it is to look at this right here. So I'm going to remind you of this some more because um, this is going to be the key to one of our proofs uh, tonight. Um, but this is cosine of theta. But notice here, tangent is actually the distance here. This is what tangent is. Tangent is actually the length of the tangent line from theta to the x-axis. That's what tangent actually is. It's not sine over cosine. That's actually a proof. And it's not an easy proof either. It's, a, it's a, actually a difficult one. It takes some geometry to show that that's true. Okay. That sine actually equals sine over cosine. And don't ask me to do it because I don't remember it off the top of my head. Um, I could do it, but you'd have to give me a, a you'd have to give me an hour to figure it out again. Um, it's just not something I remember off the top of my head. Go ask Robert; he probably remembers it off the top of his head. He teaches pre -cal. So what happens here? This is the tangent length again, right? Here is x or theta, and there's the tangent line. And as I get closer and closer to pi over 2, notice what happens to the length of this tangent line. Right, as I get closer and closer to pi over 2, notice what happens here. Come on. I want you to go to 0 degrees there. So notice what happens to the length of this line as I get closer and closer to pi over 2. It shoots off to infinity. Okay, As I approach pi over 2 from the left, the length of this tangent line shoots off to infinity. And then when I get to pi over 2, it actually goes to infinity. Okay, 1 to 5, how do we feel about that? Uh, stop, start. Okay. The third way is to think about it like this. Uh, uh, third way to think about tangent. So I've got tan of x equals sine of x over cosine of x. Now, as x goes to pi over 2 from the left, as x goes to pi over 2 from the left, right, sine goes to 1, right, my northiness goes to 1, and my eastiness goes to 0 from the right. So the limit as x goes to pi over 2 from the left of tan of x 
equals the limit as x goes to pi over 2 left sine of x over cosine of x. And the top bit heads to 1. The bottom bit heads to 0 plus. So this equals 1 over 0 plus, which equals positive infinity. Okay. All right. So 1 to 5, how do we feel about that? Okay, so there are a couple different ways of thinking about tangent. All right, so let's look at this pretty graph. Look at the pretty graph. All right, so as I head off to negative infinity, x is going to zero. I'm sorry, y goes to zero. As x heads off this way, y is coming down here to zero. Okay, so 1 to 5, how do we feel about part A there? Three part A. Stop. Start. Okay. All right. Now. As x goes to negative 2, f of x goes to 2. As I head closer and closer to negative 2, but don't try quit to it, right? Here from the left, I go toward my y's end up toward positive 2. And then as I come from this direction, I go down to positive 2. Okay? So there's my limit. My limit there is positive 2. How do we feel about that one, one to five? So polling, multiple choice, part B, stop and, s oops, it didn't stop. Stop, start. Okay, now, as x goes to 0, y is heading to 6, right? So here I go, up, there's 6. Here I start going, up, there's 6, all right? Okay, so 1 to 5, how do we feel there about part C? Oops. Okay. As I go to 3 from the left, I got a 4. Whereas if I go from 3 to the right, I wind up at 3. Okay, so polling. This would be parts E. Oops, did I do part D? Oh, I'll do part D in a minute. Oh, and then part D. Here, if I'm at F of 3, I go to 2 because that's where the holes filled in. So question three parts D, E, F. How do we feel about those three parts, one to five? The stuff going on around three here. And do you have any questions that's specific?
ah, it's going up and down and not staying constant. But note, as I zoom in here closer and closer to three, so if I take this thing and I zoom in here really close, it won't let me zoom in enough. As I get really, really close to three, it actually comes from just one direction. If I only look at this bit here, it's getting closer and closer to two as I go from the left. Because remember, nothing else, nothing matters except as I get really, really close. All right? So as I get really, really close, I'm heading to two. And I should be able to zoom in. I can't hear zoom in enough uh, to make that happen. If the line at 3F had a solid dot, then there'd have to be a, a non-solid dot there, because otherwise I'd be violating the vertical line test. Okay, so as I go to 3, notice that the limit from the left goes to 4, but the limit from the right goes to 2, right? So the limits are not equal. Okay. So one to five, how do we feel there about part G? Okay. All right. Part H is this thing about not settling. So there are functions that don't settle as I go to things on the inside. Let's look at one of those. Okay. So let's look at the function sine. Let's pull up. Um, uh, this is kind of the typical example. Let's see. Desmos. So here would be a question that doesn't settle. So if I do sine of 1 over x. All right, so let's pull up uh, screen two here. Here's sine one over x. Now, as I get closer and closer to, compare this with like sine of x. Okay, now, as I, sine of x settles as I go to zero, right? It's zero, correct? Because as I zoom in closer and closer and closer and closer and closer, that happens. Right? It turns into a, a basically a line at zero. And that's actually what we're going to be talking about when we talk about the derivative. What does this look like as I zoom in really, really close? What's the line that the thing... That's really one interpretation of what the derivative is. What does the slope of the line really look like as you zoom in and zoom in and zoom in? Right, Because as you zoom in, these functions look like lines. But look what happens with sine 1 over x. That behavior doesn't happen here. If I zoom in here, closer and closer and closer and closer and closer and closer and closer. Does this ever settle? No, it turns into a big blob. Because what's happening is that this function as you as you head towards zero it never settles. Right? As I head to zero, this function never settles. Whereas when I head to infinity, this actually settles. One over x actually settles as you head to infinity, sine of one over x. But as you head to zero, sine one over x never settles. Okay. One to five, how do we feel about that idea of never settling? Right, so there's ne so never settles at a finite point looks like this. As opposed to this, because this actually settles. This heads towards zero. I can zoom in enough that this definitely heads to zero. Does that answer your question, by the way? So if it doesn't settle from one side, it's not okay from that one side. 
okay? It's not that, it's that if I zoomed in enough, if I'm going to a finite point, it's more like if I zoomed in enough, I could find a settling, okay? Whereas when I go to infinity, that's that's totally a different thing, right? I'm heading over here, way over here, and it's never settling. But as I head to zero, it settles. Because as I head to six, it settles. It's settling about there. As I head to three, it settles. But as I head to infinity, it never settles. Whereas this function, if I head to zero, it never settles. Okay. All right, so that's it for the quiz. Are there any other questions? This is Desmos. Uh, there's a link to Desmos on the uh, front page. So if you go to, yeah, if you go to, let's see here, if I go here to calculus. So if I go here to calculus, note the cool graphic for two cops and a drunk. Give it a moment, give it a moment. We have to watch the graphic go. There it goes. There's a very cool graphic for two cops and a drunk that's currently our logo. If you come down here, you will see here, do 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 Desmos graphing calculator. All right. Any other questions? Uh, yes, the quiz retake will be up by the weekend. Um, the There are no codes for retake quizzes. You, If you get this code error message, that means that Proctorio, you need to reinstall Proctorio. That's what that means. Okay, so I'm going to turn off Twitch. Everyone head to, everyone make sure you're in Blackboard Collaborate Ultra. Let me talk real fast about the problem set, and then we'll all jump into uh, Discord to do the problem set.